In this video I'll be going through the 2021 May-June IGCSE Physics Multiple Choice Extended Paper. The diagram shows a stone of irregular shape, which property of the stone can be found by lowering it into a measuring cylinder half filled with water. Picturing a measuring cylinder filled with water, lowering the stone into it is going to raise that water level. The difference between the volumes is going to give us the volume of the stone. So our answer is C. Which row describes speed and velocity? Speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector. So our answer is B. Four balls with different masses are dropped from heights shown. Air resistance may be ignored. Which ball has the smallest average speed? If air resistance can be ignored, then the balls will fall with the same gravitational acceleration, regardless of their mass. The longer the distance, the longer they accelerate for, and therefore the larger the speed. We are asked for the smallest average speed, which is going to be achieved by A. An object of mass 2 kilograms is taken from the Earth where the gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kilogram. To the Moon where the gravitational field strength is 1.6 newtons per kilogram. Which row is correct? And so we have the weight on Earth and the weight on the Moon. Our weight force is going to be our mass times the gravitational acceleration. For the Earth that's going to be 2 times 10 which gives us 20 and for the Moon that's going to be 2 times 1.6 which gives us 3.2 and so our answer must be D. The mass of an empty flask is 34 grams. The volume of liquid added to the flask is 20 centimeter cubed. The total mass of the flask and the liquid is 50 grams. What is the density of the liquid? Our density is equal to the mass per volume, where because we're asked for the density of the liquid, we need to use the mass of the liquid. The mass of the liquid is the difference between our total mass of 50 and the mass of our empty flask of 34. And our volume is just 20, which gives me 0.8 grams per centimeter cube, which is our answer A. The extension load graph for a spring is shown. The unstretched length of the spring is 17 centimeters. When an object is suspended from the spring, the length of the spring is 19.2 centimeters. What is the weight of the object? And so if we have our unstretched spring, which is 17 centimeters, and then when we add an object, our spring stretches, to a distance of 19.2 centimeters. Our extension is this distance here, which is 19.2 minus 17, which gives us 2.2 centimeters. Our graph here tells us the amount of force produced for any given extension. For an extension of 2.2, we get a force of three newtons. And so our answer is D. A cart has a mass of 10 kilograms. A boy pushes on the cart horizontally with a force of 50 newtons. The cart accelerates at 0.5 meters per second per second. What is the frictional force acting on the cart? And so our acceleration is produced by our net force. Our net force is going to be our force of 50 minus our force of friction, which is what we're trying to find. Rearranging this equation, our friction force is going to be 50 minus our net force. To find our net force, we know that our net force is going to equal our mass times the acceleration. We know that the mass is 10 and the acceleration is 0.5. Therefore, our net force must be 5 newtons, which means that our friction force is 50 minus 5, which gives us 45 newtons, meaning that our answer is D. A ball has a mass of 2 kilograms. The ball approaches a wall at a speed of 3 meters per second and rebounds at a speed of 1 meters per second. What is the impulse on the wall? Our impulse is going to be equal to our final momentum minus our initial momentum. Our final momentum is our mass of 2 multiplied by our final velocity of 1. Subtracting our initial momentum, which is our mass of 2, multiplied by our initial velocity, which because it's in the opposite direction to our final, we must make negative, which gives me 8 newton seconds, which means our answer is D. Which situation involves no work being done and no energy being transferred? A car skidding to a stop on a road is going to be converting kinetic to heat and sound, so it can't be this one here. 
A crane lifting a load is likewise going to be transferring energy into gravitational potential, so it can't be this one here. A heavy load hanging from a strong bar doesn't imply any energy being transferred, so it could be this one here. A student dragging a big box over a rough floor is similar to our car skidding to a stop on a road, transferring kinetic energy into heat and sound, so it can't be this one. Therefore the answer must be C. A student suggests that there are several ways of transferring energy to a small stationary block of iron on a smooth table. He makes the following suggestions. Heat it, which will indeed give it thermal energy. Shine a light on it, which will do the same. And pass a current through it, which will likewise heat it up. All of these will transfer energy, therefore our answer must be D. An engine produces 240 kilojoules of energy in two minutes. What is the power output of the engine? Power is our work over time, where our work is at 240 kilojoules, and our time is at two minutes, which is 120 seconds. Which gives me two kilowatts. Our answer is therefore A. A book has a mass of 400 grams. The surface of a book in contact with a table has dimension 0.1 meters by 0.2 meters. The gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kilogram. What is the pressure exerted on the table due to the book? Our pressure is our force divided by area, where our force is due to the weight of the book, given by its mass times the gravitational acceleration. Our mass is 400 grams, or 0.4 kilograms, and our gravitational field strength is 10. Divide that by our area, gives me 200 newtons per meter square. Our answer is therefore D. The diagram shows a mercury barometer. At which point is the pressure greater than atmospheric pressure? Our greatest pressure is going to apply at our point D, because it's both going to experience the pressure from the atmosphere, but also the pressure from the mercury above it. The table gives information about molecules. Which row describes a gas? In a gas, the force between the molecules is negligible, and the distance between molecules is far apart. Therefore, our answer must be C. Very small pollen grains are suspended in water. A bright light shines from the side. When looked at through a microscope, small specks of light are seen to be moving in a random jerky manner. What are the moving specks of light? Our moving specks of light are our pollen grains reflecting our bright light. The reason they're moving is because they're being hit by water molecules, not by other pollen grains. Therefore, our answer is B. Why are small gaps left between the metal rails of a railway track? Small gaps are there to account for expansion. Expansion is going to occur when the rails are heated up, which occurs more on a hot day than it does a cold day. Therefore, our answer must be A. A block of metal absorbs 2000 joules of thermal energy. The temperature of the block rises from 10 degrees Celsius to 20. The mass of the block is 2 kilograms. What is the specific heat capacity of the metal? Specific heat capacity is given by the change in energy divided by the mass times the change in temperature. Our change in energy is 2000, our mass is 2, and our change in temperature is 10, which gives us 100 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. So our answer is B. Which statement about boiling and evaporation is correct? Boiling requires a supply of thermal energy, but evaporation does not. Both require energy. Evaporation takes place at the surface of a liquid, but boiling takes place throughout the liquid. That is indeed correct. When water boils in a kettle, its temperature decreases. It does not. When water evaporates, its temperature increases. And it does not. Our answer must be B. A metal rod is heated at end X. Why does end Y of the metal rod become hot? Thermal conduction involves a vibration of both the positive ions and also the movement of electrons. Not just the positive ions only. Our answer is therefore A. Two square sheets of metal P and Q are heated to the same temperature. The metal sheets are shown. Sheet Q is emitting more radiation than sheet P. Which statement explains this? Dull black surfaces are better conductors of radiation, it is rubbish. Dull black surfaces are better emitters of radiation, it is also not the case. The surface area of Q is larger than that of P, it is both the case and a reasonable explanation for this effect. White surfaces are better absorbers of radiation, which is simply not the case. Our answer is therefore C. 
A water wave passes into a region where the wave travels more slowly. As it passes into the slow region, what happens to the frequency and what happens to the wavelength of the wave? The phenomenon occurring is refraction, throughout which the frequency remains the same. Because we know that our wave speed is our frequency times wavelength, and that our frequency remains the same, if we're moving into a slow region, then our wavelength must decrease. And so our answer is C. Light travelling at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second strikes the surface of a glass block and undergoes refraction as it enters the block. The diagram shows a ray of this light before and after it enters the block. What is the speed of light in the glass? The ratio of these sines of our angles is equal to the ratio of our velocities. Rearranging that for velocity gives me 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and so our answer must be B. The diagram shows a narrow beam of light incident on a glass air boundary. Some of the light emerges along the surface of the glass, and some is reflected back into the glass. Which row is correct? This is an example of total internal reflection, is not the case, because we still have a refracted ray. Angle theta is the critical angle, is true, because our ray is refracting along the boundary. So our answer is A. An object is placed in front of a thin converging lens. The diagram shows the path of two rays from the top of the object. An image of the object is formed on a screen to the right of the lens. How does this image compare with the object? Both of our rays are going to continue as they are, giving us an image that is larger and is inverted. So our answer must be A. A remote controlled vehicle is traveling on the surface of a planet. The vehicle senses an obstacle ahead. It sends a radio message to the control room from where it is being controlled. The control room is 2.4 times 10 to the 6 kilometers away from the vehicle. The control room sends a message back to the vehicle telling it to stop. What is the minimum time that elapses between the vehicle sensing the obstacle and receiving the message back from the control room? The distance that our signal is going to travel is going to be 2 times at 2.4 times 10 to the 6 kilometers, which gives me 4.8 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. Because we have a radio wave, our velocity is going to be the speed of light 3 times 10 to the 5 kilometers per second. Because velocity is distance over time, our time is going to be our distance divided by velocity, which gives us 16 seconds. So our answer is D. A sound wave is travelling outwards from a loudspeaker into the surrounding air. Here are three statements. The air pressure is lower at a rarefraction compared with the undisturbed air, which is true. The density of the air is less at a compression compared with undisturbed air, which because at a compression we would expect air to be closer together and therefore the density to be greater, this must not be true. The distance from a compression to a rarefaction equals half a wavelength. This is true because a wavelength would be a compression to a compression with a rarefaction halfway in between, meaning that a compression to a rarefaction must be half a wavelength. That means 1 and 3 are correct, so our answer must be B. The sound from a loudspeaker must pass through two materials to reach a microphone. Which combination of materials gives the shortest time for the sound to reach the microphone? The speed of sound is greater in denser materials, which given that these two are far denser than the other options, means our answer must be C. Diagram 1 shows a small compass needle with its poles marked. It is not near any magnetic materials. Diagram 2 shows a bar magnet with its poles marked. The compass needle is placed at point P. In which direction will the end pole of the compass needle point? Our north pole is going to be attracted to our south pole, which means it's going to point towards the right. A student rubs a plastic rod with a cloth. The rod becomes positively charged. What has happened to the rod? This type of charge occurs because of the movement of electrons, not of protons. If the rod were to gain electrons because electrons are negative, we would expect it to be negatively charged, as opposed to losing negative electrons, which will make it positively charged. Because our rod is positively charged, it must have lost electrons, and our answer must be C. An isolated metal sphere is positively charged. It is then brought near to another isolated metal sphere that is neutral. What happens to the charges on the neutral sphere as the positively charged sphere is brought close to it? As our positive charges are brought close, our negative electrons are going to be attracted to the left. Our positive charges, or our positive protons, are however not going to move. 
Our answer must therefore be D. Which statement about the resistance of a metal wire is correct? It is directly proportional to the length, but is not directly proportional to the cross-sectional area. It is in fact inversely proportional. Our answer must therefore be B. The circuit diagram shows a light dependent resistor in a potential divider. A voltmeter is connected across the LDR. Which row shows the resistance of the LDR and the potential difference shown on the voltmeter at a specific light level? The resistance of an LDR decreases in response to bright light, which means that this is true and this is not. If the light is dim we have a high resistance, which means that this is true and this is not. If the resistance on our LDR is high, then we're going to get a higher voltage across it, therefore this is true. On the other hand, if our resistance was low, then we would likewise expect our voltage to be low, not high. Our answer must therefore be C. Three NAND gates are connected in a single chip as shown. The whole chip behaves as a single logic gate. Which type of logic gate does the chip act as? Because our inputs are tied together, if this is on then this is off, and if this is off then this is on. And the same for input 2. And so the only way that our output here is off is if both of these are on. That is only possible when both of these are off. Which means that this must be an OR gate. A solenoid is connected to a very sensitive ammeter, a rod is inserted into one end of the solenoid. The ammeter shows that there is a small electric current in the solenoid while the rod is moving. Which rod is being inserted? The effect here is electromagnetic induction, which as the name suggests requires that the material be magnetic. And so our answer is B. The diagram shows an electric generator with the coil in a vertical position. Which row describes the generator? As our coil rotates the current is going to alternate direction, which means we must have alternating current. The voltage is going to be zero when our coils are not cutting across our magnetic field, which occurs when their velocity is parallel, which is the case when our coil is vertical. So our answer must be B. The diagram shows a transformer. There are 460 turns on the primary coil and 24 turns on the secondary coil. The primary voltage is 230 volts. What is the secondary voltage? The ratio of our voltages is equal to the ratio of our turns. Multiplying both sides by 230 gives me 12 volts, so our answer is B. The charge on a proton is E. What is the charge on an electron and what is the charge on a neutron? An electron is negative the charge of a proton and the charge on a neutron is zero. So our answer must be D. Four students are asked to comment on the processes of nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Their comments are recorded in the table. Which row is correct? During fission energy is not absorbed, it is released, and it involves a large unstable nuclear splitting, not joining. As with fission energy is released in fusion, it is not absorbed. It involves two light nuclei joining, not a large unstable nuclear splitting. Our answer must therefore be D. Radon decays by emitting an alpha particle. Which nuclide is formed in this decay? If our radon 21986 decays into some mystery element and an alpha particle, our alpha particle has an atomic mass of 4 and an atomic number of 2. To keep our atomic mass the same on both sides, the atomic mass of our mystery element must be 215, 219 minus 4, and our atomic number must be 86 minus 2, which gives us 84. Therefore, our answer must be polonium. The graph shows the activity of a radioactive source over a period of time. What is the half-life of the source? Half-life is defined as the time for a 50% reduction in a radioactive nuclide, which can be indicated by its radioactivity measured in counts per second. So if we start at 120, 50% of that is 60, and 50% of that is 30. What you might notice is that each halving is accompanied by a 2 minute duration. Our half-life is therefore 2 minutes. And we're done.